Suppose we want to compose some trigonometric functions involving inverse functions of values that are not common, things that are not found on the unit circle. For example, let's say we have the tangent of the inverse cosine of one-third. Keep in mind that inverse trig functions are just angles, so this is really like the tangent of some angle. So since we're talking about the inverse cosine, we have to keep in mind where we are restricted to. The angle restriction of cosine was between 0 and pi, so it's somewhere in either quadrant 1 or 2. Since this is positive 1 third, it's going to be in quadrant 1. Okay, we don't know what the angle is, but what we do know is that theta is the inverse cosine of 1 third. So if I want to get the 1 third by itself, I would take cosine of both sides. We'll see why I'm doing that in one second. So then cosine composed with the inverse would undo each other as long as that one-third is in the domain of inverse cosine. The domain is between negative one and one, so this is in fact one-third. So this means that the cosine of the angle is one-third. We've seen things like this before, where cosine in a right triangle is defined as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So let me just take that angle I drew, call that not the hypotenuse. So then the adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is 3. So now I have a missing side. We call that x. So 1 squared plus x squared is 3 squared. So that x squared is 9 minus 1, which is 8. So x is square root of 8. And it's positive because it's in the first quadrant or 2 squared of 2. So now going back to my problem, tangent of the angle. So tangent is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to have 2, I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent, 2 squared of 2 over 1, giving me 2 squared of 2. Okay, let's try another one, just like that. Let's say we have the secant of the inverse tangent of negative one-half. So again, inverse trig functions are just angles, so this is really the secant of some angle. So let me draw this angle in the appropriate quadrant. Keeping in mind the restriction for inverse tangent, the restriction that we put on tangent was between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it has to be either in the first or the fourth quadrant. Since this is negative, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so that means that theta is the inverse tangent of negative one-half. So if I take the tangent of both sides, we can undo the composition. I'm sorry, they undo each other with the composition, giving me back negative one-half, because the domain of inverse tangent is all reals, so that would always be true. So this means that the tangent of theta is negative one-half, or opposite over adjacent. So in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to make this a right triangle, with the opposite side being my one, my adjacent side being two, and the one that's going to be negative would be the one. So I have a missing side, which is the hypotenuse, I'll call it x. Okay, so negative 1 squared plus 2 squared is x squared. So x squared is 5. So x is going to be positive square root of 5, because it's the hypotenuse. So then going back to what the question is, which is the secant of theta, secant of the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant will be hypotenuse over adjacent. 